Question, when did you last see a really good data analysis in Excel? Hmm. Perhaps you've never seen a really good data analysis in Excel. And the truth is really good Excel data analyses are actually quite rare. That's because so many people are kind of struggling doing things in a very ad hoc way. And that's the results you get. In this video, I'm going to take you through my five-step process that I use for my Excel data analysis. It's going to get you approaching data analysis with confidence and get you producing the Excel data analysis that you need. We'll get to that in just a second. Let me tell you briefly about my Excel cheat sheet. Uh, this is a one-page downloadable PDF that can guide your Excel learning. I tell you the 21 formulae, 13 techniques I think you need to know. It's absolutely free. Download link is below this video. With that said, Let's get into our presentation. So we've got five things. We've got five things to think about. Firstly, we've got to talk about objectives. Are you taking the time to make it clear in your own mind what you're trying to do? Because Excel can't tell, you know, telepathically or something like that. We've got to make objectives, objectives clear first. Then secondly, data location. Where is it located? And you're not going to tell me it's fragmented across sheets. Please, it's got to be in one place. We'll talk about the importance of that. The data's got to be clean. We'll talk about how to keep data clean on the way in and then how to clean it up if it's not so clean. Let's be honest, it's probably not going to be. And then the type of data, the type of data is important because it determines the techniques that we are going to use. Are you ready? Let's get into this. Work through these steps. So, we have a download file, file available with this video. It's going to make the stuff I'm saying make sense. So the link is in the description. Go ahead and download that. Objectives. Are you taking the time to write down your objectives? I recommend using pen and paper. I've written down my objectives here. Now, do these objectives make sense to you? If not, you haven't downloaded the download file because it's all about salary information. And I've written down what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get average salary for each location. What do you want to do? Do you want to count something? Do you want to categorize some continuous data? We'll talk about the frequency formula later. So cool. Do you want to get a measure of central, central tendency and average? Do you want to get an aggregate, sum something up? I've got some words on the right over here to help you. Stop the video now. Take the time to write down your objectives for your data analysis. It's going to make everything easier as we go forward. Secondly, the location of the data. Again, you're not going to tell me it's fragmented across sheets. This is the cardinal sin. It really is the cardinal sin in Excel data analysis. But I understand it happens. It's a natural thing to do, isn't it? As data sets get bigger and bigger, we think, right, I'm going to organize it and I'm just going to separate it out across sheets. That means we have less data on each sheet. But that really is a critical mistake. I can't emphasize this enough. So if you've done this, don't worry. We can still be friends. It's all good. But just take the time now to consolidate the data on a single sheet. Make sure you line up all of the column headers properly. And then in the future, keep it on one sheet. If we can do that, we can unleash the power of some of the techniques we're going to talk about in just a second. So let's get that done. Then let's talk about data cleanliness. So important in Excel once again. We can't unleash the power of the techniques if the data isn't clean. So before we talk about the problems, let's talk about prevention. A stitch in time saves nine. So you should be using data validation. You should be using data validation on your spreadsheets, things like drop down menus, because they're going to stop this kind of problem. But I understand almost inevitably you're going to have some data cleanliness, data quality issues. So it's things like spelling like this. It's the classic impossible to tell thing, which is if you have a space after an entry, that's an example of a data quality issue. So how can we clean up the data? Well, the unique formula is a great addition in Excel. If you haven't got access to it, you need to update your version of Excel. That tells us the number of unique values in a data set. It's going to highlight things like spelling mistakes. And then we've got the trim formula is going to get rid of that, those spaces um, at the end of entries. The value formula is going to convert text to values. We might even need to do some filtering. Don't like filtering on the channel so much, but we might need to do some. It's going to show us all the values in the column. And then for more complicated ca cases, we and I might need Power Query or Excel VBA. So data cleanliness is important. And a stitch in time saves nine prevention is more important than cure. So make sure you're doing your data validation. But if we've done our objectives, the data is one place, the data is in one place and the data is, in, is clean, we could then think about the type of data. So the first question, 
Are we dealing with numerical data or text data? Hopefully a fairly straightforward question. More likely you're dealing with numbers. So the next question for numbers is, are we dealing with continuous or discrete data? No, statistical term alert, no way. Don't worry, we're gonna explain them right now. Discrete data is one of a limited number of values. So in the download file, we've got our salary band and each of those entries, while well, each person is in one, two, three, four, salary band one, two, three, or four. So it's a limited number of entries, even though it's value. So we call that discrete data. Compare that to continuous data. Now, continuous data could be any value, really. So 70.98, 75.59, 29.54, often involving decimals and decimal places. This kind of data is not one of a limited number of values, is it? So this kind of data we call continuous. Why is it important? It's important because it determines the choice of technique. A common problem in data analysis is that people aren't using the right techniques. Let's make sure we're using the right one. That's going to really smooth things out. We'll talk about techniques in just a second. If you're using text, then it's a little bit simpler. A great first step is to, once again, use the unique formula or, or remove duplicates to find how many unique, unique entries are in your data set. So with that said, we've done object, uh, objectives, the location of the data, the quality of the data, the type of data. Only then can we go on to select a technique. So what's the best technique for your task? Well, you know the type of data now. If you have continuous data, like the salary data in the download file, it's all about, it's all about the frequency formula. And fans of the channel know I love the frequency formula. Check out our dedicated video, the pinned comment um, at the top of the comment section. I'll put the link in there. What does it do? It's this concept of categorization or bins. So it's going to create these bins and then tell you how many occurrences fit into each bin effectively. So for example, more than 10 and less than or equal to 20, there's 46 occurrences. And then we can go down and frequency continues incredibly powerful formula, allows us to create these beautiful visualizations. What about this column chart? How about that for telling the story of the data? That's what you can get if you work through these five steps. Then what about COUNTIF? Well, if you have discrete data, COUNTIF is an absolute workhorse in terms of Excel data analysis. I use it all the time. I hope you're using it too. There's an example in the download file. It's very easy. We just say to COUNTIF, look at this data range and tell me how many times a particular value occurs. In this case, we're using it to count the number of people from each location. And once again, it's a great precursor to a nice visualization. In this case, a pie chart. There's not enough pie charts in spreadsheets. I love a good pie chart, not a three-dimensional one, a two-dimensional pie chart. Now we're talking. It's a great complement to a column chart because it's a different form of data presentation. So with those te two techniques, you're going to be able to get a lot done. But I've just written some more advanced techniques that are going to help you in specific situations on this slide. So are you going to try this five-step approach? Let me know in the comments. I'll get back to you there. Take care.